International pressure continues mounting on the President of the Republic of Cameroon over the Anglophone crisis in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. We can make a recapitulation of international reactions to the deepening socio-political and security crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. An army a rescue a soldier is injured in a gun battle with separatist fighters in Kumba, Meme Division, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. They were attacked by gunmen while they were struggling to put out flames on a building at Mbonge Road. Stay with us. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television, live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babley Jonathan. Pressure continues mounting on the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul B., and his government over the socio political and security crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. A crisis that has lasted for more than uh, close to three years today. And tonight, we're going to make a recapitulation of international reactions to the Anglophone crisis, international non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, uh, European Union, the um, Americans, and of course other foreign and international bodies have been reacting to the Anglophone crisis, mounting pressure on President Paul Beer and of course the other parties involved in the Anglophone crisis to uh, work towards a return to normalcy and peace in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon, Innocent as it has more. The President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia, on November 30th, 2017, declared war on the Anglophone Cessationist at the Simalan International Airport from Côte d'Ivoire. Since then, the Anglophone crisis turned to an armed conflict with killings and destruction of properties recorded till present. This drew international attention from 2018 and became a challenge to Cameroon's foreign relations. Many countries, international right groups and organizations from last year pressurized the government of Cameroon to dialogue with separatists. On May 30, 2018, the United Nations declared a humanitarian crisis in southern Cameroon and started organizing aid. The UN calls on governments to impartially carry out investigations of possible human rights violations in the two English-speaking regions. On November 20th, 2018, the UN condemned both sides, the separatists for abductions, school attacks, and killing of military men, and the government for carrying out extrajudicial executions, arbitrary arrest, and unlawful detention and torture. Before this, the European Union had on June 20, 2018, supported the entry of the UN bodies to the Anglophone regions and called upon the Cameroonian government to allow this. In April 2019, the European Parliament passed a motion condemning human rights violations in Anglophone Cameroon and calling for an investigation of possible war crimes committed by Cameroonian soldiers. It also calls on the government of Cameroon to stop using military trials for civilians and francophone calls for anglophone detainees. The motion concluded that the anglophone crisis, if it continues, should be tabled at the United Nations Security Council. In June 2019, the EU gave its blessing to the Swiss mediated negotiations, which saw the BIA government launching it. On May 6, 2019, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, said there was still a window of opportunity to end the crisis, but government has to take decisive action to win the trust of the population of the northwest and southwest regions. These and more reactions from the international community caused panic in Yaoundé and the head of state in October 2019 announced a major national dialogue which held with resolutions reached though yet to be implemented for return of peace. 
While the dialogue was ongoing, hundreds of Anglophone Sudanese were released. The Commonwealth of Nations, the International Organization of La Francophonie, and others expressed support for the initiated peace process. Recent pressure from the United Nations, United States, and the United Nations Security Council on the persistent social political impasse has instigated announcement of an extraordinary parliamentary session upon high instruction from the President of the Republic, Paul Bia. An extraordinary parliamentary session which holds this Friday, December 13th, 2019 with objectives still unknown to many Cameroonians. And the rate of gender-based violence is on the rise in the northwest region of the country hit by crisis for close to three years uh, today and the rate of sexual or better still gender-based violence is increasing as uh, clashes and of course gun battles between pro-independence fighters and elements of the national armed forces notably security and defense forces continue in that part of the country and in the report coming up next our correspondent uh, Stella Mbou takes a look at efforts to help victims of gender-based violence in the northwest region some opinion hold that most women are sexually harassed based on how they were dressed. Gender-based violence experts say it is no excuse for violence to prevail. It's quite uh, unfortunate that people always go with a blame game. Uh, mostly perpetrators and other community members uh, who seem not to understand the far-reaching effects of uh, gender-based violence and especially rape on the victims and the survivors. We are, we are concerned about the fact that they are being victimized because of who they are. Gender-based violence is as old as mankind. Before the arms conflict in Anglophone Cameroon, this violence ranging from rape, domestic violence, denial of resources, female genital mutilation, breast ironing and psychological abuse, to name these few, already had disturbing figures. Today, these figures are rising as the Yams conflict continues to render many vulnerable. In the, the week that just passed, we had at least nine rape cases. That's an appalling kind of a, 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 a statistics to, to go by. The homes have been burned, uh, people are running away, and all of those things are, are, are pushing women and, 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 girl, and girls, and including children, to now take up more responsibilities. And now most of them go and give what we call sex for survival, for survivor, and that's a gender-based violence issue. And within the context of the crisis, they are not doing that because they want it. They are doing that because the situation has forced them. In the Northwest region, Persons with special abilities have been targeted. We've had a good number of cases with disabilities. We've had people with visual impairments. We've had those with mobility impairments and even some with intellectual disabilities who have been violently raped and sexually assaulted. It's quite appalling to, to, to think that in a crisis situation, people take advantage of those who cannot see. People take advantage of those who cannot evacuate themselves because they cannot access the environment which is inaccessible, not because of their, their, any, anything of their making. The Cameron Baptist Convention Health Services recently inaugurated this structure, aimed at giving hope to survivors of gender-based violence. One of the days where we, we sit and uh, take and uh, internalize the pains we go through, we are saying that for gender-based violence survivors, there is hope for you in the horizon. We have a number of services that are out there for you and I to be able to utilize within the referral pathway of uh, gender-based violence. Now we have uh, the space that CBC has just recently uh, opened. It's a one-stop shop for survivors of gender-based violence. And when we talk about a one-stop shop, it's a space where if you have been victimized, if you have been violated out there, you can call uh, uh, to the, the center and you will have someone talk to you, someone listen to you. You have some food to eat. You have space to rest, not just for hours, but you can rest for one, two, three days. You will have equally um, a legal person talk to you. You will have the medic 
see your condition and just to say that we are giving all of those services for free especially for those who are very vulnerable this one-stop shop is realized with support from the United Nations Population Fund. We realized in the Northwest that following statistics from surveys that the rate of gender-based violence has drastically increased. So this called for an action. And this is one of the response actions in order to go a long way to help survivors to seek services that are available that could help them to come out from their stressful situation and develop positive coping mechanisms to live a normal life again in the society. The situation of gender-based violence in the conflict hit Northwest region is alarming and survivors are encouraged to speak out if justice must be served. Gender-based violence alarming in the northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon as the crisis continues uh, deepening further and an army rescue soldier is injured in a gun battle with pro-independence fighters in Kumba in the Meme Division southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. They were attacked while they were struggling to put out flames on a building. Smanjikan Gebre has more. It was a tough battle as the Army Rescue Unit of Kumba struggled to put out a fire outbreak at the Mbonge Road neighborhood Wednesday night. Four, four, four. Four. Four, four. Four, four. The fire, whose origin is still to be established, took the over 10 inhabitants of the residence constructed out of makeshift materials by surprise. Reasons why all properties in the house were destroyed by the flames. The story turned sour as the elements of the army rescue unit were attacked by unknown gunmen while they were walking leaving one of them injured. Early Thursday, upon our return to the incident site, we met vast area of land that has been completely emptied due to the fire incident. According to the heads of the Army Rescue Unit, no loss in human life was recorded, but for a female occupant of one of the rooms that was burnt, who collapsed after her room was completely destroyed. Seven gas bottles were also removed from some of the rooms after the rescue team had finished working. <laughs> The Pioneer Regional Delegate of Decentralization and Local Development for the Southwest Region has urged local or better still municipal authorities to step up efforts to ensure the success of the decentralization post process and above all the development of their respective municipalities. Uh, Mukete Joseph was speaking during his installation by Southwest Governor Benau Kalia Bilai. Derry Jato reports on Boya. Southwest Governor makes his entrance at the Buya Council to install Mukete Joseph as the pioneer regional delegate of decentralization and local development for the Southwest region. But first, Governor Bernardo Kalia Bilai drew the attention of all to what he called the Shock Buya municipality has recently been confronted with the demise of Mayor Kema Patrick Isunge, who was also one of the strong links in the decentralization chain. In this regard, may I now invite you all to please rise for a minute of silence in his honor. May his soul rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, to Governor Bernard Kalia Bilai, the creation of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development, to the appointment and now the installation of the regional delegate, is a move by President Paul Obia to meet up with the aspirations of the population. In this light, the most talk about decentralization should no longer be considered as a simple slogan or dormant policy but a priority to the entire government under 
the distinguished leadership of His Excellency President Paul Bia. Mokete Joseph, the pioneer regional delegate, is therefore expected to sustain with the various officials of the decentralization local entities. What is expected from the new regional delegate is one to assist the, the municipalities to make the municipalities become really autonomous. And the message from Mokete Joseph, the pioneer regional delegate of decentralization and local development to his collaborators, was that of hard work and zero tolerance. No, we have not come to take the place of mayors or government delegates or whatever who are just like providing authority to make sure the government policy are well implemented because any misbehavior will not be tolerated. Mokete Joseph hails from Jian Division in the Southwest region and before his appointment he was a support staff at the Department of Human Resources in the Ministry of Finance. And the moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, the PCC, Right Reverend Funky Samuel Fober, has said the church will continue partnering with the state with regards to efforts to find a way out of the Anglophone crisis and, of course, a return to normalcy and peace in the crisis hit northwest and southwest regions of the country. He has also said men of God must continue doing their work and, of course, working towards this objective and of course preaching the good news of uh, salvation everywhere and even in the crisis hit northwest and southwest regions of the country. He was speaking to the press uh, shortly after the induction of 23 pastors at Presbyterian Church Bonaberry here in Cameroon's economic capital and the men of God have been urged to go to the ends of the country and why not the world and even in the crisis regions of this country to preach the good news of uh, salvation vision of Jesus Christ and of course to serve God and uh, man and the nation. Take a listen to Reverend Funky Samuel Foba and two of the pastors who were inducted at PCC Bonaberry yesterday. During this crisis period, to be able to continue to pray for the council and to encourage this church to remain strong and optimistic that better days are ahead. So, the obligation of these 23 young men and women is an indication that the church will continue to partner with the state to see how we can bring hope to God's children in Cameroon. I'm working in Donga Manto and my parish is Chip Parish. The crisis driven every piece, and we are right down in the bush, and most of them have come down to Douala. We will keep on trusting in God and knowing fully that all is well. As an ordained pastor, I'm challenging myself that I'm going to work hard to bring the gospel of Christ to wherever I go. Council has received 39 petitions from uh, political parties taking part in the February 9, 2020 municipal and legislative elections in the Republic of Cameroon. Some of the petitions are asking for the rejection of some list of uh, Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM Political Party, and the National Reconciliation Party of Cameroon, PCRN of Cabra Libby, over irregularities pointed out in the files of some of the candidates of those political parties. The foundation stone of the new National Assembly building has been laid by our speaker, Kavai Yege Jibril, and the laying of the foundation stone took place today in the Yaoundé. The, the 54.5 billion francs CFA project is the fruit of a partnership agreement between Cameroon and China, and the new assembly building will be uh, with a hemicycle of 400 places and uh, other facilities will be established on a surface area of over nine hectares. The foundation stone was laid today by House Speaker Kavai Yege Jibril. 
In the report coming up next, we are going to be talking about the problem of inadequate electric energy supply hitting big cities and the hinterlands in the Republic of Cameroon. A case in point is in this newscast is the Dea 2 subdivision in the Senegal Maritime Division Littoral Region of Cameroon Immaculate Fogo Report. The year two subdivision in the Senegal Maritime Division, Littoral Region of Cameroon, for the past three weeks till present, is hit by inadequate power supply. The situation has resulted to a halt in economic activities which require electricity to work with many business persons incurring losses. Almost everybody in the area is now using candles with just a few using generators. Look at my fridge. It is empty. Please, people should have pity on us. The festive season is at the corner. How are we going to cope? This is too much to bear. Old and dilapidated electric poles could be seen lying down in farms and streets, with some of them hindering circulation. The risk of electrocution upon restoration of electric energy supply in the municipality is equally feared. Inhabitants say the absence of electricity in the area has increased the rate of insecurity in the municipality. The company in charge of distribution and sales of electricity explained that the power cut stamped from a transformer that was destroyed by flames. They are urging those in administrative positions to see to it that energy is reinstated as soon as possible. Next. Thanks, dear viewers, for staying with us in Talking Points. We are receiving an educationist, an entrepreneur, and a business development service provider. Um, Boyan Vincent, Andy, you're welcome. Thank you very much. You come from a village in the Ndonka Mantum Division 1D. And uh, I want to first of all find out from you, when was the last time you went to the village? Pretty one year, six months ago. One year, six months ago. Yeah. Why have you not been going to the village frequently? Irregularity in the village. No one knows who is who. So we are afraid of just dashing into the village because nobody's, everybody's becoming very unfriendly mm. because of the present situation in the country which we already know about. You heard Cardinal Tomi indicating that uh, there is some improvement in the situation in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Uh, what about the situation of your village in particular, which uh, you, you know too well, the situation of Wanti in the Ndonga Mantum Division? In Wanti, presently, the places, the place where I come from is bushy. In fact, we, can, we, we live with rats in the house. So it's uh, well, they say the problem is actually improving, the situation is improving, but everybody's in fear. So I don't think we can actually say that we would live with confidence in our own habits. Hmm. How are the people managing to live in the fear, in the uncertainty, in the, the, the climate of, uh, you know, uh, tension and so on? Well, I think that because they have actually been in the situation for a pretty while now, they are coping with it. They already know that, okay, these are, these are moments that we're supposed to be in our hideouts, these are moments we're supposed to come to our village markets and so on. But then it's not so easy with them. They are coping with it. My mm -hmm. own mother too is living in the bushes. So they know how and where to go to. All right. The, you, you heard in this newscast the rate of um, sexual or uh, gender-based violence on the rise as a result of the crisis. Um, an element of the Army Rescue Unit in Kumba and in Meme Division injured in a gun battle with pro-independence fighters. They were attacked while they were struggling to quench flames on a, on a, on a, on a house around Bongerut 
when you listen to these incidents, when you listen to some of these things, what's your take on the, the, the future on the situation? Well, I think that the future is not so bad. But the things that are happening around, I don't know who is trying to help what station. That people are actually thinking that, well, they are in a situation they want to rescue. But then, within themselves, still going to abuse others sexually. I think that uh, if we actually thought that there was something coming out from what they are really thinking or what they want to bring about, then they shouldn't go, uh, go by hurting individuals sexually. If you hurt somebody sexually, you hurt your own sister, how do you think you can be able to govern the same person you want to rescue from a situation you think you're fighting for? I don't think that that situation of actually harassing women sexually and doing what is the aim of what they are fighting for. And if that's it, then it's actually something we can't say that is good. All right, an extraordinary session of the uh, National Assembly of the Lower and Upper Houses of Parliament will open tomorrow. And there are um, indications that the Anglophone crisis will be on the table during that extraordinary session of Parliament, notably with the issue of the special status for the northwest and southwest regions of the country, which demands a constitutional amendment for its implementation. What do you expect from the lawmakers? Now I'm happy. Even though they call it extraordinary, it's timely. Yeah. There was supposed to be a time like this when people wake up to what reality. I'm expecting that somebody will come and say, yeah, there is a problem and this is the time to solve the problem. With measures that are realistic. Not just something you're going to promise somebody and then go back and stay and be reluctant. And we are expecting that if the lawmakers are coming up now that yes, there is pressure on us, let's do this thing. Let them do what is supposed to be done now. And we are expecting that they will come out with measures that will bring peace to both sides that are troubled. Okay, the situation on the ground has a devastating impact on the economy, on the, the, the problem of uh, youth unemployment. The rising youth unemployment in Cameroon, there are many young people today who are unemployed because they have been kicked out of their homes, because they are unable to carry on with their normal day-to-day -day activities because of the gun battles, the violence going on in the areas of uh, residence. As an entrepreneur, what's your take on the impact, the economic impact of the crisis? Before the crisis, Cameroonians have been facing unemployment issues. But then that's aggravated because a lot of people that were able to manage themselves in their locality are now in the wide in the big cities where they cannot cope. Housing has become something that is terrible. But then now that we have a situation on ground, we can't think of where we're coming from, but where do we go to from now? One situation where we can be able to transform them economically because they are suffering. A lot of youths, the population of Douala is growing by day. And even we have just one job to do, now a lot of people are there to do the jobs. That means they can't actually be able to get enough like they were getting from uh, when there was no crisis. So a lot of people are outside there to do the same thing, maybe the maniac jobs that people were doing. So if we have to do something now, then the time has come for us to either diversify, not just struggling to do something to get a living, to earn a living or being paid a salary, but creating an enabling environment where people can be able to think beyond just earning a salary and producing something that they can pay, for, someone can pay money for. Creating value. One situation, an enabling environment where somebody can produce something not just having a skill, but how to sell the skill and get money. And that's where you, you put in place uh, or you develop an initiative which you call Creative Fingers. Yes. Uh, what is it all about and how can it help uh, some of these young people who have um, been forced out of their homes and they are now jobless in Francophone parts of the country, some who are even in the two Anglophone regions of the country but are jobless because they can't carry on with their activities as a result of the unstable socio-political climate and young people in general in Cameroon. Creative Fingers Transform Thinking for Innovative Development is an initiative that we're bringing people who already have skills that cannot sell. 
We want to make you to know that the tailoring you are doing, somebody is there that needs your services. But if you hide it somewhere and you are not a professional, you cannot do something that somebody can pay for, you will not get money. So the initiative is bringing skilled and unskilled youths around, using what they have, transforming it into viable business propositions, turning it into value that somebody can be able to pay for. If you know how to sew clothes and then you cannot produce a garment that somebody can pay money for, then you will eventually not get what to eat. But if you please your customers by producing what is good and your customer can be able to pay for, then create an enabling environment where you can meet your customers. Because I have a situation where a lot of people are skilled, but then they don't have a market. How about your market segment? That's what we are doing in Creative Fingers. Making sure that you produce something, then there is a market ready for you. You, you just can't do create a service and then you don't have a platform to sell the service. So in Creative Fingers, we don't just want to end up training people. We train people, we teach them their market segment, and we transform what they already have into viable business propositions. And, and, and the question some of the uh, young people who are listening to you now want to ask, but um, you're talking about transforming uh, the excuse into uh, viable business proposals, viable business proposals uh, into something that can put food on their table, yeah. into something that can uh, enable them to stretch a helping hand to those around them, to those looking up to them, uh, and so on. But the question is how to go about this? How to go about this? Trans uh, creative fingers, how will it uh, create the, perform the magic? I want to put it that way. If you are a young man looking at me right now, do you have a skill? Is there something you have learned? Do you have a talent? Move around somewhere. You could you see our programs come there. We want you. You know, because somebody, you know, the, the Cameroonian youths are wonderful and they have skills. But the truth that is here is that you cannot help someone that is not ready to help himself. So when you see us organizing programs, and you really have a skill, don't hide. Don't hide. Are you internally displaced that you have something you were doing in your village and you are now in, in Douala, you cannot do anything? You come up, meet some people, find out about creative fingers. Don't stay somewhere and think that somebody will bring food for you. So what we're saying is that you, we can only help you if you're available. Yeah, in churches, pastors watching at me, you know that you have people in the church that are not working. If you have a church where 75% of youths there are not working and you are a clergy, it is important for you to create programs, start programs and bring experts to come enlighten these young people. They have skills that people can pay money for. They can produce something. Like now I'm working on a beauty product that everybody wants to, even if it's going to cost me just, I'm going to sell it for 100 francs and get just 25 francs. I'm aiming at selling it to maybe 500,000 Cameroonians. Those things, little, little things that we neglect around us that can bring money, those are the things that people actually don't think that can give them a living. You know, what you say now may sound to some like, uh, you know, a, a kind of miracle something that, that will just happen. Uh, but uh, the, the, the issue here is that even God says, I'm going to bless the works of your hands. Yeah. In other words, you have to do something with your hands for God to bless what you have done. Now, how to go about, uh, in, in fact, the question is, what does it take to be able to transform what you have in you, or even what you don't have, into something? What does it take? In, uh, information. When you're not, def when you're not informed, you're default. It takes information. And if I tell you that this thing is going to happen overnight, it's a lie. You see, one of the things that we have, the charismatic chaos, where people say you're going to have a car tomorrow, you're going to fly abroad tomorrow. To where? To do what? Cameroon has everything we need. So we need people that want to work their way to success. It's not a thing that somebody's going to do it overnight. I prove this thing by doing hard work. I work on construction sites, I move anywhere and tell people, I'm not telling you there is a miracle you can work and perform and get money now. That would be stealing. 
But I want that you come up. Come up. Let's put our hands together and produce and create the Cameroon of our dreams. You have something that can transform your country. Why do you dash to somebody's country, pay lots of money to fly to another person's country to do maniac jobs that you could actually do here to transform your country? But some of them who are moving abroad, some of them who are even going through the perilous journey of uh, crossing the desert, uh, crossing the, the, the Mediterranean Sea, some of them dying, will tell you that they have tried lots of things in Cameroon. They have tried businesses. They have tried all sort of things, jobs, and it's not working. Why is the problem? Is yeah. it with the people or the environment? The environment has no problem. One of the things that I move about and tell people is that you want to start a business, get informed. Don't just see somebody doing poultry business and you think that I'm going to start a poultry business tomorrow, today and hit it big tomorrow. Find out what, he, what where he started. Be ready to take the risk and face your own challenge. You know, you cannot go about a thing you don't know anything about. So I think that we inform people. We enlighten people that this business that I want to start, these are the nitty gritties of the business. You don't just start a business and chop up and you want to make money. If you want to start a business with the, with the, 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 the mindset of just making money, you will fail. When starting a business, everybody will just think that is money. But money is the least thing you need to make a business succeed. The business must first of all exist before money comes in. So if you don't have a business that you can actually present to people and let the business be viable, that means viable, that means investors can actually see that this something can come out from the business. And be productive. And be productive. That means you're putting a product with innovation, you know, transform thinking for innovative development. That's what Creative Finger is all about. Now, I remember in one of your um, meetings, you were talking about uh, the mindset, the problem of mindset, especially with young people today. Yeah. Uh, people who think that since I have a master's degree, uh, I can be a poultry farmer. You know, since I have, you know, a degree in law, a degree in this and so on, I can be selling granules. Since I have this, I cannot be this. I need to be wearing a very nice suit, you know, carrying a good bag shining my shoes in the morning and moving thoughts and office and things like that that suit mentality is the thing that is destroying Cameroonians. a a person selling puff puff and having money to eat at the end of the day and a master's degree holder that slept without eating who is successful a third of Cameroonians will go without this without food this evening because they don't have food to eat and you see that most of the youths are sleeping and thinking that something is going to happen overnight. If you have a first degree in geography, what are you going to present to people? But then somebody that is doing little peanuts can be able to boast of maybe 500 francs at the end of the day. So what we are saying is keep the papers at the corner. Yeah, they are very relevant because without schooling, we cannot be able to present what we are presenting to the public now. But I think that Earning a living is beyond just having some qualifications. So that to say is telling any person that your qualification is important, but then use it to get a skill that you can market. Then earn a living from it. If you don't live for something, you will die for nothing. And so that's why you see people moving just 2018 alone, 2017, 2018, 5,000 migrants died on the desert struggling to go look for money. Some of them spend four million, five million to go abroad, then they deport them. If you drop four million on my table, I know what I'm going to do with it in two years. So, and I will live good as if I were abroad. Your brain has to think creative, Yes. think out of the box, Excellent. and then your fingers get to work. Yes. I will ask one before we go, an advice to... Creative fingers. It's an initiative that we make the brain to think so that the hands will not suffer. The muscles will suffer if the brain does not think well. So get informed about the business you want to do. F make findings. Read. Go to social media. Read. Don't use social media to just talk to people or say any kind of hate speech. Use it to learn. Improve on what you have so that you can meet the train in which time is flying. 
Boyan Vincent Andier, educationist, entrepreneur, business development service provider. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today.